So there's a new botnet that's targeting Linux SSH servers with brute force attacks. Let's check it out. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and today I wanted to show you guys some more cyber news. And this was something that came out on August 5th. And I also seen my man, Professor Black Ops, uh, cover this article as well, or an article somewhere that talked about this topic. So I wanted to give him a quick shout out. Just make sure you check out his channel. I think I shared his video on my community tab, so just check it out. But let's hop to the article right fast. Okay, so this article is on securityaffairs.co, and I'll put the link down in the description of the video, but it basically states that new Linux botnet wrapper by brute forces SSH servers. And the subtitle says, uh, wrapper bot is a new botnet employed in attacks since mid June, 2022 that targets Linux SSH servers with brute force attacks. And it's crazy because I just recently did a video showing you guys how to protect your server from brute force attacks by installing fail to ban so this rolls right into it that is a issue out there for uh linux servers that or on, on the internet that they could possibly be brute forced by some type of botnet targeting ssh uh ports which is port 22 and this seems like an automatic uh brute forcer uh, similar to what I was talking about in the other video, but it says researchers from uh, 40 guard labs have discovered a new IOT botnet tracked as rapper bot, which is active since mid June 2022. The bot borrows a large portion of his code from the original Mari botnet, which unlike other IOT malware families, it implements a built-in capability to brute force credentials and gain access to SSH servers instead of Telnet as originally implemented in Mari. And so essentially what they did was took an original botnet and changed the target port to port 22. So that's essentially what they did. And at the end of the day, they're looking to gain access to servers that have password authentication turned on and to be honest if it's using like a botnet uh fail to ban or kind of be slow to you know catch the ip addresses especially if they're running the attack from multiple devices with multiple ip addresses uh, so it'll take a while to actually catch them so you may have to modify your configuration file in order to catch the way is brute forcing and you can do that by looking at your authentication logs and looking through and seeing some of the ip addresses that are coming through and see if they're repeating and adjust your configuration file for it now it says uh also experts also notice that the most recent sample includes the code to maintain persistence so that's crazy right there once they actually get into the system uh they set it up where they can always access the system. That's what persistence is. And it says, which is rarely implemented in other Mari variants. Rapperbot has limited DDoS capabilities. It was designed to target ARM, MIPS, Spark, and x86 architecture. And just to read a little bit of this, this is quoted, but it says, unlike the majority of Mari variants, which natively brute force telnet servers using default or weak passwords. Uh, Rapperbot exclusively scans and attempts to brute force SSH servers uh, configured to accept password authentication. Now, one way to prevent this attack, just so you guys know, is to completely turn off password authentication. Don't allow any users to log in via SSH using password authentication. That's the easiest fix to stop yourself from getting uh, hacked by this botnet. Now it says the bulk of the malware code contains an implementation of an SSH 2.0 client that can connect and brute force any SSH server that supports a Diffie-Hellman key exchange with 768-bit or 2048-bit key 
end data encryption using AES-128 CTR. Reads the analysis analysis published by 40 Gord uh, Labs. A distinctive feature of the brute force implementation in Rappaport is the use of SSH 2.0 Hello World to identify itself to the target SSH server during the SSH protocol exchange phase. Now it says earlier samples of the malware um, had the brute force the brute force credentials list hard coded in the binary but for from july the sample started retrieving the list from the ct server so they're probably updating this list you know as they go but it says since mid july rapper bots started using self-propagating to maintain remote access into the brute force ssh servers the bot runs a shell command to replace remote victims SSH authorization key. So that's that's crazy that they're actually doing that. I guess as long as you don't have password authentication, you know, turned on, it won't be able to get into your system, but it looks like they're replacing your keys, you know, and that's, and if you guys didn't know, uh, I did a video a while back on setting up SSH server uh, using password list authentication. And that requires you to create a SSH key and then you upload that to the server. Well, from what it looks like, they're replacing those authorized keys. And it says with one containing the threat actors SSH public key with the comment, hello world. So that's that's crazy right there that they actually doing that once they, you know, get into the system. Boom, they got SSH keys on the server. Now it says, once stored public keys stored in SSH uh, authentication keys, anyone with the corresponding private key can authenticate to the SSH server without supplying a password. And that's 100% true. That's how you use those keys. That's essentially key authentication. Now it says, uh, RapperBot is also able to retain its foothold on any device on which it is executed by appending the same aforementioned ssh key to the local ssh authentication i mean authorized keys on the infected device upon execution this allows the malware to maintain its access to these infected devices via ssh even after the device reboots or the removal of the of wrapper bot from the device so it says right here in the latest uh, rapper bot. Well, this I'm not gonna read this, but it looks like uh, uh, it adds a, a root user called Sue Helper to the infected device and directly uh, writing to the password file as well as the shadow file, uh, further allowing the threat actors to take complete control of the device. So yeah, they, they'll have full access if they do that. You know what I'm saying? so and this is a diagram of what they're actually doing uh, so send the commands you know get credentials list uh re retrieve commands or receive commands and then the infected iot so wrapper bot add ssh keys add root user uh, udp dos uh, tcp stop and then this is the loader server uh, installs a wrapper pod on the server, SSH server, and then scan for SSH servers, brute force card credentials, add keys on success. So this is the IOT, and then this is the SSH servers that it's using. So that's how the botnet is actually working. So they're sending commands to the bot uh, or to the botnet, and then, you know, the bots are receiving those commands and going after those SSH servers. Now it says early versions of the botnet has strings of plain text. Subsequent ones added extra obfuscation to the strings by building them on the stack to avoid detection. Since mid June, the botnet used over 500 unique IPs worldwide. So that's <laughs> one of those ways that uh, you're gonna have issues with if you have failed to ban installed on there. Just go on and install SSH keys on it turn off password authentication and i might do another video just showing you guys how to turn off password authentication there's plenty of tutorials out there that show you how to do it you know what i'm saying but you want to do that and 
uh, that'll prevent the brute forcing and you having to worry about them getting the password authentication. Uh, but it says in attempt brute forcing Linux servers, uh, SSH, uh, world client identification string. Most of the IPs are from the U S Taiwan and South Korea. So they are tracking, you know, what IPs are coming from. And it kind of sucks because one of those things you can do, um, with your firewall, you can block IPs from a specific location. So if it's coming, let's say from China and I'm not picking on uh, China, um, if it's coming from Russia, you can ban IPs from that location, you know what I'm saying? Or China or, you know, wherever. So, uh, but this was an interesting article and I thought I had to, I thought I should cover it because I wanted to make you guys aware uh, to go on and turn on um, SSH key, you know, authentication on your SSH servers, as well as remove uh, password authentication. But of course I had a link down in the description of the video. And also if you have any um, questions, go down and leave comments down in the comments below. And of course, keep it techie.